This week, Home Assistant 2024 drops, and in case you missed it, there are some repairs you need to make sure you took care of before you update. So just in case you are like me and waiting until the last minute, this video is going to walk you through how to fix them. Oh, and stick around because I will give you a peek at some of the things coming in this release and tell you which one is my favorite. Chances are you've already taken care of these repairs. After all, most likely there has been a repair notice bugging you to fix them. We will be playing in the YAML for this video because it will be easier to fix at least one of them that way. And for the others, the YAML config option is going away, so we'll need to remove it from the YAML. So have your YAML editor of choice ready to go. And we're going to start with the one that might impact you the most, which is calendar list events. When response variables dropped last year, calendar.list underscore events was one of the first services that supported that new functionality. Then almost as quickly as we got it, the team gave us calendar.get underscore events and deprecated the list underscore events service. And for the last six months, list underscore events has worked, but that all ends when 2024.7 drops. So if you're still using calendar.list underscore events, you'll probably have a repair notice like this one. The easiest way to update this is to probably open up the file editor of your choice and use that handy search function. We're going to search for calendar.list underscore events. Now, the only difference between the list events and the get events service is get events allows you to get the events from multiple calendars at one time. So as long as you already had a duration to search to find and at least one calendar entity to target, you can replace list events with get events. But because get events can now return events from more than one calendar, you need to consider that in your automations and scripts. For example, here with list events, you can refer to the results as school.events. Where school is the name of our response variable, we assigned to the response from that list events service. But with get events, we now have to include a reference to which calendar we want to use from that response variable. So instead of school events, we need to use school, then in brackets, the name of our calendar entity we want the events from. In this case, calendar.school. And that entity will need to be wrapped in quotes. So you'll need to update any reference to include the name of the calendar entity, even if you're just searching one. If I made that more confusing, or if you have questions, jump into the Slacker Labs Discord. The link is in the description, and I'll try and help get you to a good place. In any case, once you've updated your automations and scripts, save your changes, and if you have a script you want to test, you can go into services under your developer tools. Pick the script that you've just updated and run it, and you should get results. Now we can jump back into our repairs and mark that one fixed by hitting submit. If you've been running Home Assistant for a while, you may still have the system monitor integration defined in your YAML. But five months ago, it was migrated to a UI-based integration. The migrations should have happened automatically. So if you want to make sure, you can jump into your integrations. Scroll down to the bottom and you should see System Monitor. This integration provides some system sensors to help you track the host running Home Assistant. I mostly use this for random posts on Mastodon that my smart home sends out, but it may come in handy for something more useful. What didn't happen automatically was removing the old YAML config, and if that is the case, you'll have a repair notice. So jump into your YAML config. Search for platform colon space system monitor. When you find it, just highlight it and delete it, or comment it out, and then save your changes. Then you can head back to repairs and mark it done. The last repair for me, at least, is this notice that the display option beat is being removed from the time and date integration. I don't think I ever used this, or if I did, it was so long ago I forgot. In any case, it doesn't matter because it's being removed. So to make sure my system doesn't break because it disappears, I'll jump into my YAML. You can search for platform colon space time underscore date. And if you have the beat listed in the display options for that integration, you need to remove it or comment it out. Now you can save your changes, head back to repairs, and mark that one done as well. 
And that's it for the repairs I need to complete prior to 2024.7. If you have any that I didn't mention that are required prior to 2024.7, let us know in the comments so we can all be ready. Speaking of the release, there are some nice quality of smart home life improvements. The ability to take control of a blueprint for easier modifications is going to finally make blueprints really useful. I've avoided them up to now because if you wanted to use it as a foundation to build a more complex automation, you had to ask the blueprint owner to change it or you had to start from scratch. And you might as well have just written it yourself to begin with. But now, if you have a blueprint, you'll be able to set it up as you normally would. And instead of just saving it, you can go to these three dots and choose Take control. This will convert it to a regular automation or script, and you'll be able to change it and make it your own. Add actions, add conditions, and even add more triggers. The changes to data tables are also going to be nice. When looking at, say, your device list, you'll be able to customize this view by hitting the cog, and now you can choose which of these columns are visible, and even move the order around. And when we finally get the option to sort by last change or last updated timestamp, or when the team finally adds a date the entity was added to Home Assistant, this will become really useful. That unfortunately is not in this release though, so I see this as more of building for a better future. Home Assistant will also let us know if we have syntax errors in our automations now, and if so, will give us a repair notice telling you to fix it. Scripts, didn't get the same love, but Frank told me that he put it on the list for a future update. But now we're to my favorite feature of this release, which is we finally have the ability to link a template to an existing entity in the UI. For example, let's say I create a template binary sensor. We now have a dropdown to select an existing entity to link this new sensor to. And if I save this and flip over to that device I linked, you can see that it's now listed as a sensor for this device. This will make it easier to automate with the template-based entities. Unfortunately, it is only available for templates created via the UI, but I love that templates are getting more features. There is definitely more coming to Home Assistant in this release, so be sure you check out the release party on Wednesday for all the latest info on this release. And with that, I hope you have a smooth update to 2024.7.